Hi, and welcome to Art with Mrs. Torres. Today we are going to be learning about the first element of art, and that is line. As you can see from the artist that I am showing today, this artist works with a lot of lines. He's a pop artist, and his name is Keith Herring. I can't wait to teach you this project. It's going to be fun and really easy. I hope you enjoy it. Let's begin. Hi, and welcome to Art with Mrs. Torres. Today we're going to be doing a drawing of Keith Herring. Keith Herring's artwork is full of fun and lines. Do you see all these lines radiating out from this person? He's holding a heart. As we're working on our project today, we're gonna to be drawing lots of lines as well. And line is one of the elements of art. Now, when we talk about the elements of art, that just means things that artists use to make their picture interesting. One of those is line. So today we're gonna to be working with line. Now, the first item I'm gonna have you gather in just a minute is some paper. Now, just go over to your printer and get some paper out of the printer. You don't need anything fancy, just regular pieces of paper. And I want you to get a couple sheets of it. The other thing I need you to look for is a marker of some sort. I'm going to be using a sharp marker. I'm also going to be using a pencil for doing my drawing. Now my pencil has an eraser on the end. You can use that or you can use your own extra eraser if you have one in your drawer at home or in your art supplies. The last thing you're going to look for is something for coloring with today. I am gonna be using my markers, but if you don't have those, guess what? Crayons will work just as well. So what I'm gonna have you do is pause your video and you're gonna gather up these items. Let's see how many things we need to gather. One, two, three, four, five things. You need paper, a pencil, an eraser, a Sharpie marker, or a black crayon, and something to color with. So pause the video and meet me back here in just a minute when you have your items. All right, if you have gathered your items, the first thing you're gonna get is your paper. You're gonna use more than one piece so that they're stacked up so you don't get any ink on your desk. The first item we're gonna work with is our pencil and our eraser right now. So you're gonna look at your paper and make sure it is tall like a door. This is called vertical in the middle of your paper. Just put your finger in the middle, find the middle, and make a dot. Now this dot we're going to erase later. This is just for now to help us balance out the size of our drawing. So you probably heard people say things like, oh, I'm not a good artist. I can't even draw a stick figure. Well, that's what we're gonna be drawing is a stick figure to start out. So we're gonna start by making a circle for the head around this dot. Now before we start to draw, I want you to try to draw as light as you can. So the first thing we're going to do is draw a circle around the dot. Now that's going to end up being the head on our little person. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to start to draw his arms. So I'm going to start on this side and I'm going to draw a line that goes out See how it's going out and a line that goes up. Now I'm going to do the same thing on this side. I'm going to make a line that goes out and a line that goes up. All right, now before we move on, we're going to take our eraser. We're going to erase that dot in the middle of our picture. We don't need that dot anymore. Okay. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to draw a line that comes down. This is going to be his body later. We're going to change it. We're just starting it out. It's going to come down like this. And we're going to start by making one bendy leg over here. So we're going to make a line that goes out and then down. Now for now, we're just going to give him a small little loop. For a shoe. We're going to make it much bigger later. Now we're going to draw the other leg right here. So we're going to go over here. We're going to make a line that goes out a little bit. So we just extended it a little bit. 
and this time it's going to go just like what we did here. So it's going to go down. So you see how his knee is going down and then down again. And then just give him a little foot right now. We're going to make his feet much bigger later. All right, now we are done with our stick figure. He looks kind of funny right now, but we're going to turn him into this character. Now our character is not going to look exactly like this character because we're drawing it. It's going to look like our own style of drawing. So what we're going to do is we're going to pretend that this is his bones and we're going to draw around his bones. So it's kind of like a race car driving around a racetrack. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go above this line right here next to his head. That's going to be this line right here. And we're going to go over and we're going to stop before we get to that line. And then we're going to go up. Now watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to form this loop for his hand. So I'm going to go up, around, and stop before I get to that line. I want to stop before that because now I'm going to go on the other side of this line to make his arms a little bit wider. So now I'm going to go down. I'm going to go around the side of this, around the side. And then I'm going to do the same thing on this side. So I'm going to go up over this line. Remember, that's the bones. We're going to draw around the bones. So I'm going to go up here. I'm going to go next to that line. I'm going to stop before I get to this line. I'm going to go up. I'm going to make another loop right here for his hand. So I'm going to go around and stop. Now don't touch the line. Stop before you get to the line. Down, around that corner right there, and then stop. All right, you just drew his two arms. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take our eraser and erase the bones out of the middle of that. We don't need that anymore, so I'm just going to rest my hand on my paper. Remember I taught you before, this is the duck, and we want to erase in the duck's mouth so the paper doesn't wrinkle. So I'm going to move my duck right here, quack, quack, quack. I'm going to erase that line right in the middle, making sure that I erase right inside the duck's mouth. That way my paper doesn't wrinkle. I'm going to erase the line on this side too. I'm going to put my hand right here. So this is my duck. He's quacking right here. I'm going to erase inside of his mouth. Look what happens to my paper if I erase outside of his mouth. I'm going to wrinkle my paper. So I'm going to erase that line right inside. Brush my crumbs off. All right, and now we're going to come down and we're going to do the same thing for the side of his body. So look over here. He's got kind of a curvy body right here. So I'm going to make a curvy body. And I'm going to stop before I get to his leg. And then we're going to start to form his leg. So let's see what his leg does. It goes out and down. Kind of looks like the number seven, doesn't it? So I'm going to go around this line here. So I'm going to go out and down. Now remember I told you we were going to make a much bigger foot than that. That foot is too tiny. Look at how big this foot is. So I'm just going to loop it around and bring it behind. See how I did that? I went around and behind. And maybe you're going to make really big feet on your person and that's fine too. Then this line's gonna go up, so I'm gonna go up and then stop before I get there. And I'm gonna go over and stop. Put on the brakes before you get to this line. And now we're gonna copy this line. So we're gonna go down. And then we're gonna go copy this line down. And remember, we don't want to keep those little tiny feet. We're going to give them a bigger foot. And we're going to go around behind the line. Back up. Stop. Put on the brakes before you get to that line. And back. Now, once we get to here, we're going to do the back of his body. So look at the back of his body. What letter does that look like to you? It looks to me like the letter C. So I'm going to make a curve from here to here, 
the letter C, around and back. All right, now once we've done that, it's time to erase these lines on the inside, the bones. We don't need those bones anymore. But before we do that, I'm noticing his head is kind of light and it's much darker here. So I think I'm gonna retrace this top of this head just a little bit darker. And do you notice it doesn't come all the way around and form a circle. So I'm gonna stop it before it gets down to kind of where the chin would be. All right, let's put our pencil down. We're gonna grab our eraser or use the end of your pencil and we're gonna erase the insides. So the first thing we wanna do is put our hand down, rest our hand down. We're gonna erase right inside this little space here. Now most of you out there watching my videos are right-handed. That means you hold your eraser with this hand. So you're gonna be putting this hand down and you're gonna be erasing like this. I am a left-hander, so I hold my pencil on my eraser in this hand. So go ahead and erase that line and the center line, we don't need that one anymore. We're gonna erase this line in here, and the line in here. And we're gonna erase this little part right here. We don't need this line at the bottom of his head. Well, look at that, we just completely copied what Keith Haring did in his drawing. Now up here on the top, we're going to make a big heart. So if you don't want to make a heart, I have another idea for you. So my first time I did my project, I made a heart. The next time I did my project, I decided he was gonna be holding a giant sun. Maybe you want him to be holding a baseball or a soccer ball or something else. You can decide what you want your artist to be holding up above their head. So for today, I'm gonna to teach you how to make a heart first. Now, if you want to make something different other than a heart, to make a sun, all I did was I took a can and I set my can down. See, I'm just using some corn. And I set it down and I took my pencil and I traced around this can to make my circle. And then I went over it with my marker later. So there's another idea. But for now, I'm gonna teach you how to do the heart. So this is my trick for making my hearts because every time I do hearts, I have a little trouble doing it. You're probably a lot better at hearts than I am, but this is how I make my hearts. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find the center where I wanna make my heart. And there are two dots that I'm gonna be making. One dot is this little point right here. And then the other dot is gonna be the bottom of the heart. So first I'm going to go down from the top and I'm gonna make a dot kind of directly above his head up here. So this part is gonna be this little point of my heart. Then I'm gonna skip a space down here right above his head and I'm gonna make another dot so they are even. See how they line up? So the trick to making my hearts is to make sure that you go up and around and back. Don't just come around and back because it won't really look like a puffy heart. So you wanna go up, around, bring it all the way back until it touches that dot. Then I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. So you're gonna go up, around, and back. Now maybe your heart isn't touching your hands, that's okay. And maybe one side is bigger than the other. That's okay. If you want to stop or pause the video and erase it and fix your heart, you can do that. But I really don't care what it looks like. We're just having fun today. Now, once you've designed your heart, then we are ready to change out our pencil and start with a marker. So I'm going to be using a Sharpie marker. If you don't have a marker, you can use a black crayon. I'm gonna take the lid off my marker, put it on the back, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna move this drawing a little bit out of the way so I don't make, make it um, messy. So the first thing I'm going to trace is the top of my person's head. So that just looks like a rainbow. So I'm just gonna go nice and quick all the way around. And today, I'm gonna to have you try to trace your line two times so it's a little bit darker. So every time I do my line, I'm gonna trace it one more time so it's a little bit thicker and a little bit darker. 
So the next thing we're going to trace is one of his arms. So I'm going to go one, two, and then I'm going to retrace that line again. One, two. So every time we draw something, I want you to draw it twice. Now we're going to make a loop for his hand once and make the loop again twice. Now we're going to come down his arm once and do it again twice. You see when we go over it a second time, it makes it a little bit darker and a little bit thicker, the line a little thicker, which is the way Keith Haring draws. Now we're going to trace this line right here. So we're going to go once, twice. Oops, do you see how when I made my second line, there's a little space there? I'm just going to sneak my pen back in there and close it up. All right, now we're going to trace his tummy once, twice, and his leg once, twice, and then this would be his shin once, twice, and his toe. That's just a big old loop. Did any of you guys make a big foot? Oops, do you see my little peekaboo spot right there? Fill it in. Now we're going to go up the back of his foot and up the back of his leg. Oh my goodness, did you hear my pen squeak? That means I'm pushing too hard. Sometimes, if you can hear your pen make a squeaky sound, that means you're pushing too hard. So try not to push hard with your pen. Now as you are working, and you're going around your lines once, twice, and around the foot once, twice, pretty soon, you don't even need to follow me, you'll know what you're doing. And if you make a mistake, Please don't worry if your pen makes a little bump when you're doing it or if you go off of your pencil line. Do you see how I went off my pencil line? That is okay. Remember, we can always erase our pencil lines later. And if you really mess up, let's say your pen does something goofy and it kind of slips off like this and makes a little slip. Don't worry. We can add a little line to cover it up later. So I always mess up when I'm doing my drawings and then it just gives me an opportunity to turn it into something else. So let's see how we can cover up my little oopsie line later. I bet I can figure out something for it. Once, twice, oops, I have a peekaboo I forgot. Once, twice, once, twice. Well, ta-da, my person is done. So now when we're looking at the drawing, do you notice there are some motion lines around him? These lines that Keith Karen drew make you get the feeling that this guy's dancing, right? So let's put some motion lines around our figure too. Now remember, I have that little oopsie mark right there that I messed up on. So maybe I can turn that into some motion lines. Let's see, I can make two little lines like that, see? Maybe I'll give him a couple of little lines up here. I'm gonna give him some lines right back here like he's dancing. And maybe some around his foot too. All right, now we're gonna come up to the top and we're gonna trace our heart. So I start at my dot and I'm gonna go up and around and back. And I'm gonna do it two times. That way my marker makes a nice thick line. I'm gonna trace the other side. Sometimes when I'm going around a curve like this, then I usually get off my pencil line. And that's okay. It's kind of hard to make your hand go all the way around. So if it goes off the pencil line, don't worry. Just make your line a little thicker or you can erase it. Now, do you notice my picture is different than Keith Haring's picture? Do you see a space between the heart and his head on this picture? but mine is different and that is okay. I hope your picture looks different than mine too. I want your picture to look unique and different. Now, these lines, they have a different feeling when you look at them. Do you see when you look at these lines, it looks like he's dancing. But when you see these lines, it looks like the heart is either beating or glowing. Another word that sometimes artists use is radiating. It looks like it's shining or beating or glowing like the sun. So you see in my sun picture, I did those same radiating lines out. 
So if you notice, Keith Haring put those lines around his heart. We could do that too. So I'm going to start up here. I'm going to draw a line right above my top. And I'm always going to make my line stick. So I'm going to go over them two times. And then I'm going to make another one next to it. And another one next to it. And I'm just going to go one, two, skip the space. One, two, skip the space. One, two, skip the space. Until I end up down next to his hand. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Until I end up down by his hand. Now as you can tell my picture looks different than Keith Haring's picture. But it's my picture and I want my picture to be a little different. So inside your heart, you could leave it plain like this or you could draw a pattern in your heart. Maybe you don't want to have a plain heart. Maybe you want to do a pattern. So maybe you want to do something like this. You want to make some wavy lines inside. Those are lines also. Then when you get ready to color, you could color each one of those sections a different color. All right, when you're finished, go ahead and close up your marker, put your marker off to the side, grab your eraser, and any pencil lines that you want to remove, go ahead and erase those now. Ooh, I almost erased outside of the duck's mouth. Brush all your crumbs away. And when you're ready, we're going to start to use some colors or crayons or markers. Now, I'm going to show you a couple tricks with my markers today. So let's say you wanted to color some colors with markers. So let's say you're going to use a marker. So I showed you a couple tricks before with crayons, but I'm going to show you a trick with markers. So one thing that you want to try to do when you're coloring with your markers is you want to make sure that you color in the same direction. So let me put this picture in front only so you can see what I mean. So if I'm going to be coloring these stripes, I want to color the longest direction. So if my stripes are going this way, that's the way I want to move my marker. So as I'm doing that, I'm not going to color up and down and side to side and around around. I'm going to go one direction. So I'm going to go all the way across. And then I'm going to pick up my pen and go all the way across again. And each time I go across the stripe, you're noticing that I'm trying to make it really close to the last line that I drew. And then when I get to these small spaces right here, then I can go in and make my lines just a little bit shorter. Now I'll show you how nice that looks when I'm finished with my line work. You see how all my marker looks kind of nice and solid, all one color? So if you don't do that and you just color randomly in all different directions, you're going to see a lot of different marks on your paper. Now the next thing you might want to try is coloring with a different color. So maybe I want to use the colors of the rainbow. I could do something like that. I could grab orange next. Or maybe you want to do a pattern of red, white, and blue, or red and pink, or pink and purple. So I'm going to kind of copy this line here, and I'm going to Copy my line here, and then I'm going to go all the way across, all the way across, all the way across. So that's my first trick with markers. Now, another thing that I'm going to teach you about markers that's kind of cool is that when you're using markers, most of the time markers have a little point on the end and a little bit wider tip on the side. If I hold my marker straight up and down like this, I can get a nice skinny line. Look at how skinny my line is. Can you see that? But if I take my marker and kind of hold it on the side and I pull it across, I get a big fat line. See how chubby my line is? 
So this is kind of cool because if you want to do a little tight skinny space like this, I can hold my marker straight up and down and I can get it right into the corners of those tiny spots. But if I have a big area that I need to color, instead of scribbling back and forth with the tip of my marker, I can turn my marker slightly on its side and color with the chubby part and I can color it much faster. So look at that yellow is all done. I can use the tip of my marker to go into all the little spots that I missed. All right, so if you would like to, you can go ahead and color the rest of your picture. And then when you are done, I'm gonna meet you back here and I'm going to talk to you a couple more things that I can teach you about Keith Herring. Now this is a picture of Keith Haring. Keith Haring was born in Pennsylvania in 1958, and he learned to draw from his father. His dad was a cartoon artist, and his dad taught him how to draw. He used to practice drawing with Keith. In their backyard, they would go outside, and he would draw right next to his dad, and his dad would tell him to make up his own characters. When Keith got a little bit older, he started to copy images that he would see from Walt Disney characters and cartoons that he watched on TV. Another thing that Keith Haring loved to do was he liked to take chalk when he got a little older and he would go into the subway where the train was and he would draw pictures with chalk on black pieces of paper that were on the wall. And when he drew those pictures, all of the people that were riding the subway got to see his beautiful artwork. And that way they didn't have to go and pay to go to a museum to see real art. They got to see it for free. And he learned many different techniques of drawing from his dad, who was a cartoon artist. And his dad taught him to draw things very simply, just like how we drew today. Now, if you decide that you are gonna create something different on your picture, let's say like a sun, I can't wait to see what you're gonna come up with. Maybe you could draw a balloon floating above your person. I hope you had fun doing my art project today and I can't wait to teach you another lesson. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.